Hiya, my name is Matthew Powell and welcome to the beautiful Patzel Park Fishery, where today we're going to go through some bait tips, different ground baits, different tactics to get different fish into your peg. We're going to do 11 metre short swim on the pole, catch everything that swims, then we're going to do a big fish line targeting big fish on a feeder, conventional feeder and then a method feeder over the top for later on. So what we're going to do now, we're going to introduce the ground bait short, ground bait selection, I've prepared this last night because I want a mix that isn't active. I want it to be inert on the bottom, stays on the bottom, doesn't fizz up too much and keeps the fish down in the peg. That's really important. When you're trying to catch small fish, you want them down, you don't want them coming up. So basically mix is pro natural bream dark and pro natural 50-50, two kilo of that. And then I've mixed in two kilo of lean. So it's 50-50 ground bait and lean. Reason for the lean is, I want it to colour up the colour up the swim. I want it to have a nice cloud. Um, it's a little bit clear. The water in here is clear. It doesn't seem clear, but it is quite clear. And sometimes that cloud just makes the fish more confident. You know, if they look up and they can see sky, if it's a bit cloudy, they're more confident. They feed better, and equally, you're going to get more weight in your peg. So, let's feed these balls of ground bait into the swim, and then we'll talk about the feeder line. So all I've added to this is a few dead pinkies, a few live pinkies. And all we're gonna do is, we're gonna cut six balls in on the short line. And I'll come back to you when we're about to ship the last ball in. There's number one. and there's number six into the peg. So that's my pole line fed. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna ship back and I'm gonna put me bait in for long. So what's gonna happen with this, this feeder line is, I'm fishing this today as in a match situation. So I don't want to be going on this line too early. I think what a lot of people do when they fish, just put that on there. In fact, we'll put that out the way. Put that behind us out the way there. So I think a lot of people go on this line way too early in a match. And what they're doing is that you're actually messing up the swim by going on it too early, believe it or not. You need to let them fish settle, they're big fish you need to let them settle as long as possible. So my theory is to put a load of bait in. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a pint of bait in at the start. Now this ground bait is a lot different to what I've put in on the pole. So on the pole, we've put a sweet mix in. No fish meal in it, just a nice sweet mix. On the feeder line, we're gonna be putting fish meal in. So the ground bait for the fish meal line is, it's 50-50, special G green, GPS 90. Absolute brilliant fish meal. Really, really smells really rich and it brings them fish into the peg. And then also we've got marine method mix into it, 50-50. Absolutely brilliant mix for feeder fishing, for bream, skimmers, carp, even fishing on commercials down the edge. It's absolutely brilliant. And not only that, it's quite heavy. So when it goes into your peg, it's gonna stay on the bottom. It's gonna create a carpet of bait for them fish to come in. And all we've added to that is some one mil, some one mil sample pellets, which will be coming out soon. You, you, these are brilliant, by the way. And then all I've got is some two mil carp and coarse pellets into them. Put them in with a few four mil pellets. So we're basically being really selective on this line. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a pint of bait in. And again, we'll catch up when the last feeder full is going in. So that's five in now. What I'm gonna do on this last one, I'm gonna open it up on the surface. So what I mean by that is, I'm gonna let the feeder hit the surface. And instead of it hitting the bottom, I'm gonna literally cast in, hit the clip, really strike the bait. So it comes off like top, top to mid water. What that's gonna do is it's gonna spread the bait 
in the swim a little bit more and it's going to spread it over a bit more of an area but not only that it's going to cloud the swim up a little bit so we'll do that now so take your time cast to your marker tighten up to it and shake it out as you can see the feeder comes straight up you know it's not it's not all the way down it's coming straight up in the swim and i can bring that back to me so that's all me swims fed i'm gonna i'm gonna put this rod down and then we're gonna have a go on the pole now we've fed the two swims i'm just gonna have a quick look on the pole but before that i'm just gonna quickly run you through the rig what elastic main line floats everything i'm using so elastic is a three to five maybe dual core elastic nice and soft to strike into the fish but it's beefy enough to to swing them little skimmers into hand which is perfect 012 main line don't need to go crazy because you're only catching small fish and it aids presentation as well so your presentation is better with a smaller main line cuts through the water better and it sits in the water better it's much better three number 10 back shot just to keep it stable in the in the, this it can skim the the wind on here can skim quite a lot so you need a decent main a, a decent back shot to hold your rig in place i'm just using a 0.6 signature series 5 float ysm float with like a little pear shaped body and a little fiber bristle absolutely perfect for dotting down and hitting them little sensitive skimmer bites going down to a nice little bulk of number eight little trimming shot inch from that two drop two number 10 droppers a four inch hook link of 08 i like to fish really light and um, i think you get more bites better presentation it's just better in my opinion and a size a size 18 hook barbed hook so we're going to go in now on the pole see if there's any fish there and we'll give it a go so i'm just going to start on a red maggot always start on a red maggot i always have done i will never change it check your elastic hopefully it won't be too long until we get into some fish so I'm fishing 11 meters today so I'm just gonna go out to me swim pop my rig in let everything straighten up I'm just gonna lower my rig down nice and slow into the peg just lift and drop a little bit Hopefully it won't be too long. A little lift bite. Oh, missed one there. So just bump one. So what we'll do is just go in again. Lower the rig down nice and slowly. Float settled. Lift bite and we'll fish on. So we'll just ship that back. Break it there. Swing the fish. Nice little skimmer to start with. So straight away, we're putting fish in the net after the first chuck. And this is genuinely how the matches go on here. It's, it's all about catching small fish to start with. Being really e efficient. Take your time, something big there has just uh, decided to come out my peg to the left a little bit. So lower that rig in. And there's a fish straight away. So again, yes, they're only little, little perch that time. Yes, they're only little, but it's topping your it's topping your weight up all the time. And if you can just keep these coming for three hours before you go on that long long line on the tip for a bonus fish, you're going to be there or thereabouts. To be honest as well, what I'm thinking already is I don't think my float's heavy enough. I think there's that many small fish in the peg, I need to get my bait down a little bit quicker. So I think the gram rig will be a little bit better. Let's get that down. Right, that's down now. See, straight away, it's just holding it up. So there's a lot of fish present in the peg, which, to be honest, I'm, I was kind of 
thinking that would be the case. Because we've put quite a volume of ground bait in, because we've put quite a lot of ground bait in the peg, you know, there's going to be a lot of fish there. That's a slightly better fish, there you go. That's, that's the sort of stamped skimmers that we should be catching. So again, just keep checking your elastic. Chip out to your destination. Getting a few blows in the peg now. So literally just straighten all your rig out, lower it down. Hold it out of the water and drop it in. There's a fish. There's a lot of fish in the peg at the moment, messing around with it. I think what we're going to do in a minute is straight away this rig just isn't heavy enough it's it's getting down to the fish but because there's a lot of fish there they're being a bit funny with it so what i'm going to do in a minute is i'm going to what whiz in put the gram float on and try and nail them down a little bit that's, that's better and try and nail them down a little bit better. See, now I've had to wait for that one and it's slightly better stamp fish. That's a better skimmer. There we go. So again, it, it doesn't, it doesn't take long to amass a decent weight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this rig down, I'm going to put that heavier rig on straight away, get it down, get it in the peg fishing straight away. Exactly the same rig as before, like I've just stated, exactly the same, but the shotting pattern's a little bit closer. Shotting pattern's a little bit closer down so it gets down quicker to the fish. And it's just, just going to make me a little bit quicker. So, they are straight away, that's settled, that's got down to the fish quicker. And there's a fish, straight away, that's much better. So that little subtle change there, has just made it a little bit better. I absolutely love this style of fishing. You just, you just can't beat it. So many fish there at the moment. What I'm going to start doing, I'm going to start loose feeding a few. Not loads, just keep some, keep some bait going in the peg because I think what's going to happen shortly is, oh, they're going to eat all that ground bait and they're going to start coming up off the bottom. So I'm just going to start loose feeding a little bit to see if I can bring more fish into the peg. Won't, ne won't necessarily mean that they're going to come off the bottom by loose feeding, but I just want to see if I can just draw a few more fish in the peg. Ooh, change that bait. Because I lost that fish, I just want to change, check the bait, check it hasn't gone over the... Yeah, it's done. Nice little tip that, if you've lost a fish, don't, don't stay out there. You know, check, check your bait. Always check your bait, make sure it's fresh. The freshest bait, in my opinion, is gonna get you the, the, the fish quicker. 
And as well, another thing that I'm thinking of doing is I'm going to up my hook size in a minute and go from an 18 to a 16 straight away. Because there's a lot of fish there, there's just no need in a small hook, I don't think. So I'm going to take this 18 off in a minute and put a 16 on. And there we go. That's a better fish. So just take your time, let all the elastic do the work. Yeah, it's a better skimmer this one. As you can see that elastic's doing all the work. Bring it round to your right, the fish. Bring the fish up and then net it underwater. That's the sort of stamp that you want. Nice little skimmers like that. It's just pooed everywhere, look. Lovely. James is laughing his head off behind the camera. Absolutely perfect, Love, lovely little fish. So they're the stamp fish you want to catch. So straight away we've put on a heavier rig. And I think if we would have stayed on that 0.6, we probably wouldn't have caught that fish. Because we've put a heavier rig on, you're kind of bulking your, bulking your rig down, so your presentation's better for bigger fish, it's more stable. So I'm just gonna try this 18 again, because that worked quite well then. If we lose any more fish, I'm not gonna mess about, I'm gonna put a big hook on, 16, and then I'm just gonna keep going. There we go. Smaller fish this time. Nice rope. Somewhat a little bit different, this style of fishing, but I absolutely love it. I'd rather do this than sit on a cart commercial and catch hundred pound of carp if I'm honest and I'm sure James is exactly the same. And there we go, it's literally a fisher chuck. That's come off that one. So now we've lost that one I'm gonna do. I'm not going to mess around, I'm going to bite that hook link off because I think there's that many fish in the peg. I don't think it matters what, what size hook we got on. I think you could get away with a 14 or a 12 to be quite honest, but I'm not going to go that mad just yet. I'm just going to put a 16 hook on. So what we're going to do now we've had that last fish, I'm going to get my head down, the loose feeding's working, that initial bait that's gone in is working. I'm going to get my head down, see what we can catch and I'll catch up with you in a minute. I've been fishing now for about an hour and a half and we're, prob we're on target, I've probably had probably seven pound, all small fish. Couple of decent roach, couple of decent skimmers, but it's just starting to go a bit funny. So, see, it's, it's starting to go a little bit funny, like really, really, really quick bites. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna have one more fish on it, and then I'm gonna whiz in, put another ball out there, let it settle again, and then I'm just gonna have a quick chuck on the tip, see if there's anything on the feeder line yet. It's not going to harm it, I'm just going to have a quick 10 minutes on the feeder just while that pole settles. Just to see if there's any fish there, any liners are there. Yeah, I, can see, I can see fish out there on my tip line, but I don't know what they are. So I'm just going to go in with three or four dead baggots and a size 12, decent hook. 
no messing about. If I get a bream or a decent fish on, I want to get it in. There you go, that's, that's a fabric fish. So yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to net this fish. I've got my ball ready already in my, in my top. Another decent skimmer. So I'm just going to get this fish in the net. There's still fish on that pole line, but I just think they're just gone a bit, a bit funny, just a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop that hook on there. Pop that out. And as well, what this is going to do is just going to pin them, pin them back down. So I think what's happening at the moment is there's that many fish in the peg, they're a little bit chaotic. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put another Another ball of the mixing that we put in before, but this time it's there's a lot more feed content in it. So what I mean by that is there's more dead pinkies, live pinkies. So I'm just going to put that in. It's blowing like mad, but I don't know whether it's that lean sieving off. Might be that lean sieving off. You know, it's. I'm just going to put it as well. I'm going to put it out full length of the pole just past. There you go, that's in. So now that's in, what we're going to do is we're going to have a quick chuck on that feeder line and see if there's anything on it. So just quickly, I'll just talk to you about the setup. So I'm using a 30 gram, it's a little prototype Maver um, distance feeder I'm using. I'm just going to roll three or four dead maggots. So that's one. Oh, these maggots ain't the best. That's two. And if you want to kill maggots, just roll them quickly on your thing. Three, and then one more. So obviously if there's a if there's a decent fish it's gonna it, it'll have it'll have three or four dead maggots, a big bream. I have also got some red worms with me, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go down that route because I just don't think it's really so I'm just gonna put the same mix in that I put in before, my starting mix. So all we've got is we've got a metre hook link of 016 to a big size 12 hook with four maggots on. So I'm just going to whiz that out to where we've put that bait in to start with. And there you go. Literally all I'm going to do, I'm going to tighten up to it, put a nice bend in the tip, keep your tip underwater. Just tighten up to your feeder. If you get a bite, you'll see the two lines come together. Just sink your main line. And then literally, I'm just gonna put the rod down onto the rest. And onto my seat. Slacken off the tip a little bit. So ideally what normally happens here is, if you've got bream in your peg, you'll see liners, you'll see quite a few liners and fish present in your peg quite early. You know, I'm only, I'm only looking on this line because I've just introduced the ball on that pole line. I just want it to settle down so I've literally put a ball on that pole line just to settle it down. And I just thought I'd have a quick, right, I've had a liner there. So that's a good sign, but it could be from a small fish. So just wait, just sit, just sit on your hands and wait. What, what you're waiting to do on this feeder is a proper, proper pull, a proper, a proper bite. So just sit on your hands, leave your rod alone, leave it down and just wait for the rod to go round. Another little liner. I'm literally just going to give this 10 minutes. Another little liner. 
So that could be either small fish or ideally it could be it could be a bream, it could be bream in my peg, I don't know. So I'm literally just going to wait for a proper indication on the tip and wait for it to go round properly. And of course, we'll be putting such an amount of bait out there, it's going to take a while for the fish to become confident on that line. So all I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to give this another five minutes, just while that line settles a little bit. And then I'm going to come off this, leave it until the last hour. You know, you might, you might not get a fish on it. It, it, it might be a case that them big fish aren't here and they don't want to feed. They might be down in the shallows. They might be in the deep water. I, I don't know, but at some point we'll have a visit on that line, whether it be the last hour of the match. It might be after we've gone home and they might move in. It, it's, it's one of them, but most of the time you can normally nick a couple of a decent fish in the last hour on that line. So I think it's going to be a case of what I might do actually I might just put another three or four feeder falls out there. Yeah, I think I think I am. I'm going to do that. I'm going to put another three or four bait up feeder falls out there because I, I don't know what I don't know how much bait's on the floor now. I had a few little liners to start with, but now there's absolutely nothing. So that tells you that there's there's no there's certainly no big fish there because I'll be getting liners all the time if they're bream and the you know there's big tension here as well and a, a few carp and that. So if they were there, they would be literally I'd be getting indications all the time, but they're just not there. So I'll just have a look at the time. Another minute. It's really important as well when you come onto a feeder is tying your casts. So I just have my phone beside me and I literally just look at my phone when I've cast in, sunk the line, cast in, look, look at the time when it's at the bottom and just time it. Just literally have a quick 10 minutes because you don't want to be wasting too much time. You know, that ball now has probably broke down. That's in the swim and then fish are probably pinned down now. So I'm losing weight now in my keep net because I haven't had anything. So it's counterproductive to sit on this for more than 10 minutes when you've got feeding fish there. That's on. That's a small fish though. Oh, yeah, that's on. That's probably a small little skim of that. I don't know whether there's a fish on there or not. I think there could be. I think it's only a little fish though. See, I haven't wasted any time really. I've just literally had 10 minutes and if there's a fish on this and it's exactly the same size as what's on the pole, then I know that there's no point fishing it because I can catch them quicker on the pole. Let's just have a look, see what it is. Yeah, see, it's exactly the same sort of, oh, it's come off as well. So that's, that's proved now that I'm wasting my time out there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, I'm going to take my hook link off. I'll just put a new loop on that in a bit. Take my hook link off and I'm just going to give it three more feeder falls out there. Just so I know in my, in my head that there is bait out there. Them big fish as well, they, they, they ain't going to they're not going to bother me putting, you know, three or four feeder falls out there. They're not going to take any blind bit of notice. So again, just 50-50 mix of special G green and marine halibut with micro one mils, two mils, and then there's a few four mils in it as well. Just whiz that out there. Open that up. There we 
There we go. And I hit the bottom. I'm not messing about. As soon as it hits the bottom, empty that feeder. Get that feeder out the, out the swim quick. Because you're putting a mount of bait in, you don't want to leave the feeder in for too long. You know, you're not sitting there for fish. You actually want to feed the fish. You want to get it in, get it boshed in, get the disturbance out the way, and then leave it. So this is my last one now going in. And there you go. There, I hit the bottom. And there you go, that's, a, that's that swim refed. So by putting them three quick feeders in, I'm virtually restarting the peg a little bit. There's obviously no big fish out there, so just made a bit of noise. By making a little bit of noise, it might entice a few decent fish into the, into the area. So what we'll do now, we'll put that back down and we'll go back out on the pole and we'll see if we can... Uh... So hopefully now we go in on this and it's lift off again. I mean, it was, it was okay anyway, you know, we were catching fish, but I just thought it, it went a little bit, it went a little, they went a little bit scatty. You know, they went a bit all over the place. I couldn't really pin them down. They're coming up in the water. So I've stopped loose feeding. And all I'm going to do now is just feed a ball of ground bait. Nice and accurately with a pole. I mean, I would, I mean, you can, you can chuck small balls to be fair, but I think today it'd be better if we just keep everything accurate. And there you go, there you go, straight away. So it's, it's complete and utter waste of time being out there when you can catch these, look. So straight away, that's a better stamped fish on the pole. So that proves that what we've just done, put that ball in has worked, it's helped pin them down. Another good tip as well is don't rush your peg. A lot of people that come here put loads and loads of bait in and then they just keep putting loads of bait in. You know, they get like two or three fish, put another ball in. Two or three fish, put another ball in. It's just not the way. You just end up blowing your peg, completely blowing your peg. And you're not reading anything in your peg. You're not reading what the fish want or anything. So you, you may as well catch what you catch. There you go. That's a better fish, that is. So you may as well catch what you can in your peg. And then literally, yeah, so that's a better skimmer, that is. And then you literally just want to top up. See, straight away now, I'm thinking that these better fish have moved in. Oh yeah, that's a nice skimmer, that. I'm netting that one. That one's getting the net treatment, James, that. Yes. So straight away by putting that ball in, look, we're getting decent, decent sized skimmers. But like we've we've gone out on that on that feeder line, caught nothing, had 10 minutes on it, come back in on that, come back in on our pole line, and it's literally a fish of bung again. But they're you know they're, they're decent sized fish. They're probably three fish to a pound, which is what which is what you want. So I think what we'll do is we'll keep doing this for another hour and I'll catch up with you when it when something changes or or we can go on that bigger fish line for them bream later on. So I'll catch up with you in a minute. So you've joined me back now in the last hour and it's really crunch time. It's getting that to that stage now, I think there's match situations that I'd want to start looking on the feeder. I've changed, I've changed my feeder rod from conventional feeder to a hybrid feeder, so I've got the hybrid feeder out. And I think if I'm going to catch a bream, that's going to be my best chance on a hybrid feeder with pellets. Because it's a carp commercial as well, well, not, sorry, not a carp commercial, it's a syndicate water, you know, a lot of uh, carp anglers come in, they're spotting, putting a lot of bait in. These bream are used to 
feeding on pellets and boilies and things like that. So bloody hell, a big fish has swirled under my feet there. Right, that's a fish on. So what I think I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get this in and I think I'm gonna, oh, a big fish has swirled there, swirled off. I think that was a big pike maybe. So I'm gonna net this, it's a bit big to swing. Net that. There's a, there's a pike trying to attack my, attack my net. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to net this. I've got that in the net. And I'm going to have a chuck on that hybrid. Just, just to see, just have a quick five minutes. And then if it doesn't go round within... I'm literally just going to give it, I reckon, a 10 minute cast. Just going to give it a 10 minute cast just to see if there's anything there. So 42 gram hybrid. I've just got a mix of our new one mils and two mil carp and coarse pellets so the one mils are like a really sticky pellet um, all they're going to do is they're going to fill the gaps so a lot of people when they used to fill the gaps with their method feeder they used to use ground bait but personally i don't want to use ground bait i just want pellets there so i want a ball of pellets on the bottom a little dinner plate so that the fish can comb in on it take it what's there and go so all i'm going to do is fill the base up thumb that down Push it in quite hard, don't mess about, so it's on a nice little base. I'm gonna pop that hook on top and I'm gonna put the hook so it's facing up and then just put a few more pellets over the top of it. Not loads, just, just a few. And that's it, that's absolutely perfect. So you've got a nice little streamlined ball. There's no bait coming out, it's a nice streamlined, just take them corners off. Just push it a little bit and that's it. And now I'm going to whack that out and we'll see how it goes. And literally, I'm just going to give it, I'm just going to give it a 10 minute chuck. You never know, it might go on the rest. It might be in there for 10 minutes, go around and we've got a seven pound bream. You know, they go, they go between, I would say, four pound and seven pound in here. A big one is seven pound. So you never know, you might, you might get lucky and get one. This is the whole thing about putting a big fish line in. You've got to give yourself a chance of one on this venue because the people next door to you, they might have three or four bream. The piece of person there might have two or three bream. And you've got to put this line in. But I'm not too worried because if it would have been a match situation, I think I would have, if I would have got my head down properly on them small fish short, I think we would have done a, a serious weight on them. So literally, I've got my little watch here. Little liner there. So it's 10 to two now. That could be on, you know. Little drop back there. Little drop back again. Little knock. Drop back. Ah, little fish. So obviously this, is, this isn't right. So there's still little fish out there, even on a hybrid feeder. I think it could be still on as well. It's just a little fish. Yeah, it's just a little fish still on, look. So see, it's, it's not gonna work because they're, they're a smaller stamp than what I've been catching on the pole. So all I'm going to, I'm just going to have one more chuck on it. Another little tip is just clean your hybrid out when you've, when you've cast. Nothing wrong with that. That's perfect, perfect bait presentation. You want a little bit left in afterwards, I think. So again, thumb that bait in as hard as you can. You can't thumb that bottom base in hard enough. Hook so it's facing up. Just squidge it in a little bit. Pellets over the top, put your, put your hand on it. Tidy it up. Push it down, tidy it up. Push it down again, and then that's perfect. So I whisk that out to the space, and I'm literally, this is just gonna be the last cast. I'll leave it in for five minutes, just to see, see what it does. There we go.
get that line sunk. Because there's no point, there's no point in catching them skimmers at all the way out there, 50 meters, if you can catch them on the pole at 11 meters. It's just counterproductive. You're not, it's not quick enough. You're not putting enough fish in your swim. Sorry, you're not putting enough fish in your net. It's just a complete another waste of time. So literally, I'm just going to look at the look at my watch. So it's 51 now. I'm going to leave this in till 56. I'm literally just going to give it five minutes. And hopefully, the next time we come back to you, I'll either have a bream on, or that was death. Ah, small skimmer again. So it's a little tiny skimmer. That was a proper bite though, but it's literally a small skimmer again. These are just no good. These are just no good going for. It's it's counterproductive. So again, look a little tiny skimmer. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to come off it. I'm going to go back on the pole line. No, in fact, I'm going to have one more chuck. I am going to have one more chuck because I think I'll do it in a match. I'd have, I'd have three chucks and I'd see. I'm just going to change this wafter. So we've got some new wafters coming out soon. I can't talk too much about them at the moment, but these first samples that James has given me today are, are very, very nice. So they're a, they're a six by eight mil wafter, really nice. They're going to be really nice. Something different for the market. And they're absolutely perfect. I've just got a, a size 16 hook on. And to be fair, they're absolutely perfect. They're, they're nice and well, they waft. <laughs> That's really, really nice and balanced on a size 16, which is what you want. Push that down. So yeah, I'm literally, this is it now. This is make or break. If this does, if this doesn't go around with a bream on, I'm gonna waz it in and get back on that pole line for the last hour and see if we can get them skimmers lined up and really put a decent weight in the net. mental as well on that conventional feeder before that we were fishing how long we was having to wait for the bites on this method it's literally instant it's just mental you know they're only little skimmers but literally it's straight away because they're, li they're literally homing in on that little, pe little little bit of bait that we're putting in Right, so now it's literally crunch time now because I've had three casts on this and I've had three little tiny skimmers and they've all taken five minutes for each one to actually get the fish. So it's just completely not a waste of time. I don't know why I'm still sat on it, but just for the purposes of the cameras, if it was a match situation, I'd have one cast and if it went round with one of them small little skimmers on, I would have binned it. But for the purposes of the cameras and because we're not in that situation, I just want to show you properly that this is sometimes counterproductive, your big fish line. So we've had three casts. We've had three little skimmers on it, probably three ounces a piece, where the skimmers we catch on the pole are between four and eight ounces. So they're much better stamp of fish and we're catching them much quicker. So for me, this line, it's just a waste of time today. Sometimes you can cast on it and it'll go around and you'll have a four or five pound bream. But today it's just not happened. And unfortunately that's, that's what happens with bream. You know, they, they are where they want to be. So they are, there's a little small fish again, just tugging at it. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave this for, it's literally two o'clock now. So I've, I'd have an hour left on the thing. So I'll give it, I'll give it another minute. If it doesn't go round, I'll reel in, ship out on the pole line and just show you that it's a lot quicker on the pole. 
There you go, that's... So again, that's a small fish again. So again, that proves that it's just completely counterproductive. That bite took me five minutes. And you're at 50 meters, you've got to wind back 50 meters with a little tiny skimmer on. It's just completely and utterly counterproductive. It's not right. So as you can see that it's the smaller stamp than what they are on the pole and it's come off. So, yep. So we're going to bin that now, hook this up. I'm going to get the pole out on my swim and just show you quickly to conclude that it is definitely quicker on the pole. So I'm just going to hook a maggot. Then what we'll do, I think we'll wrap it up, show you what we've what we've caught. We'll call it a day. So hooking a maggot again. If this doesn't go over or go under within a minute, I'll be surprised. So ship out. To be honest, if it was match situations and I was catching what I was catching on the pole, no way would I come off it. You know, even with James here and the cameras moving around, we've probably still had double figures. So, you know, if I could sit on my box, there's no movement behind me or anything, you could probably have 20 pound of these little hand size skimmers, no problem in a match. And you'd be there or thereabouts with that. Obviously, it's nice to catch a bonus fish. You've always got to put that bonus fish line in. But I just think today it's, it's not been right. For whatever reason, they just don't want to play ball. So we'll see if we can get a skimmer on this and then we'll wrap it up. <laughs> it's typical they're not going to play ball now, look. Let's just move that rig about a bit. Give it a bit of movement, see if we can. There's either a big fish in the swim or the sun's come out and it's ruined the peg a little bit. Let me just see if anything no, it's just because the sun's just the sun's just crept through the clouds and it's it's only it's really shallow, it's only about six foot deep. So I'm wondering whether the sun's just there's a fish. So you straight away, it's quicker. And that's what I mean, straight away it's quicker. Best, same sort of stamp fish. What's that, three ounces? So obviously straight away you can see it's quicker and you can amass a bigger weight from there. So I think what we'll do, we'll wrap it up I have a quick debrief of what's gone on, how I've fed it, everything like that. And we'll get the fish back and we'll call it a day. So we're gonna get these fish back. Obviously you can see I've just got my net out. Um, it's been a brilliant day. We don't wanna get the fish out of the water because obviously it's really warm. We don't wanna stress the fish out. So we'll do it in the water. I've probably had close on 15 pound of fish, all little tiny hand sized skimmers. And obviously with the cameraman being in the water, I could have had a lot more than that to be fair. But we tried that long line, didn't work. So let's get these bad boys back and I hope you've enjoyed it. <laughs>